Big thanks to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. More on them later. The little foam board Ecrano plan that I built last year flew really well, but it had terrible ground handling. After every flight, I would have to run down the street to turn the plane around, and then run back. That got me thinking, it'd be pretty cool to build a ground effect vehicle around an RC car. So I bought a cheap 1 14th scale buggy with a brushed motor on the internet. I was actually pretty impressed by the performance of this thing. It's surprisingly fast. <laughs> Jesus, don't break that, it was expensive. Do you think I can drift? <laughs> no, I don't think you can drift. This thing grips. Oh, John, you're wrecking havoc. John, pull over. You? Sir, please pull over. <laughs> wow, that thing is so wow, fast. Oh, Jesus Christ. Ah, jeez. Oh, Dude, you almost broke my ankle. You should not be permitted for this. Okay. Now to start the build. The big brushed motor is pretty heavy and I was planning on powering it with a ducted fan. So I was pretty sure the airspeed would end up being faster than the wheel speed. So there's no sense in keeping the motor. So I took that out along with a stock servo that is not compatible with a standard RC signal. Then I attached a normal servo and started the CAD design. I admittedly did not have a very good vision of what I wanted this thing to be like. So I ended up just trying to make it somewhat modular. It's based around square wooden dowels and all the components just slide onto those. I printed out all the little connector bits and attached those onto the RC chassis. Since this thing was going to be carrying some extra bulk, I upgraded the shock springs to some beefier ones. Next it was time to start on the wings and tail. This was my very first time machining foam wings on my new Stepcraft M1000. I was super eager to start cutting, which is probably one of the reasons why I kind of rushed the design. But anyways, to cut proper airfoils you need to do a two-sided milling operation, which means you need to flip the workpiece over to reach both sides. The alignment has to be perfect during this flip, so I drilled four holes into the stock piece that aligns with pegs that I installed in the work surface. This ensures the stock is exactly where it needs to be to get the top and bottom halves to line up right. Being my first time machining foam wings, I made quite a few mistakes, one of which was cutting the elevon hinge bevels into the wing. This really needs to be done afterwards. I programmed it to leave in little tabs so that the wing would not be too loose in the stock, but the ones on the trailing edges ended up not working but that didn't really matter because it was constrained well enough on the sides. After machining, I cut it out of the stock and sanded all the little ridges down smooth. Then I glued in a carbon spar and put packaging tape over it, which was a mistake. I also put tape on the hinge bevels, which proved to be a problem during vacuum bagging. To make the hinges themselves, I'm using Kevlar ribbon. Kevlar is so durable that you can crack the epoxy inside of it and the threads remain intact, so it's flexible. After that, I did a layer of two ounce fiberglass and then another layer on the other side. I'll be the first to admit that for such an experimental vehicle, I kind of went way overboard with the construction techniques, but that's okay because I was just really eager to try this stuff out for the first time. Here's machining the main wings out of 50mm thick XPS insulation foam. I was using the four parallel cyclones that you might recognize from my 3D printed cyclone video. This was before I built the other ones. Machining these wings takes a while and it's a lot of work to set up the stock and the tool paths, but ultimately it allows you to make shapes that would be impossible to cut with a hot wire. All in all, I'm pretty stoked on how these have turned out and I'm really excited to use this technique for more planes in the future. After machining, I trimmed the wing out of the stock and sanded it down smooth. So I decided to do a flying wing airfoil on the main wing, which means the trailing edge has a bit of reflex to it. I did this because flying wing airfoils are supposed to have a smaller pressure shift when you transition into and out of ground effect. This makes the aircraft have more of a natural tendency to want to stay in the ground effect. Flying wing airfoils also have a tendency to want to pitch up. So to counteract this, I'm using a lifting airfoil on the tail. Usually airplanes have a symmetrical airfoil on the tail so that it does not generate any lift. So my design here is definitely a little unusual and we'll just have to wait to see if it works. So next I cut the wings in half and glued some square dowels into them. Then I cut the dowels in half so that the wings could be inserted into the frame on the RC car. I used spackle to fill in the gaps above the dowels and then after that dried, I sanded it down smooth. Next, I did a layer of 2 ounce fiberglass over the main wings and put all the wings and the horizontal stabilizers into a vacuum bag and sealed it shut. Remember how I said I should not have cut the hinge bevels with the CNC machine? Yep, well here you can see why. The vacuum bag is bending the elevons up. Not great. To combat this, I tried smooshing them down with a board and a bunch of weight on top of it. After letting it cure for a bunch of hours, I took everything out of the bag and peeled off the breather cloth and peel ply. The wings looked like this, so then I trimmed off all the extra fiberglass and sanded them down smooth. Then they got a layer of spray paint. Next, it was time to clean up the horizontal stabilizer. I trimmed the edges, sanded it down smooth, and then cut the hinges free with the Dremel. Putting packing tape under the fiberglass was a mistake because the epoxy does not stick to it at all. So to fix this mistake, I had to peel up the fiberglass and cut the tape out from underneath. 
then epoxy the fiberglass back down. After that, it was time to free up the hinges. I ran the backside of a razor blade along the hinge line to break up the epoxy, hopefully without cutting any of the Kevlar fibers. Then I would work them loose until they were nice and flexible. Then I cut out some pockets for servos and mounted them into the tail. After a layer of spray paint, it was time to cut the vertical stabilizers out of foam board. Then I started assembling all the components together. There ended up being some CG problems, so I had to reprint the shell and move stuff around. But I finally got everything put together and balanced out, so it was time for a test. Before we get to the flight, here's a quick word about the sponsor of this video, Blinkist. I love books and podcasts, but sometimes I have a tough time fitting them into my busy schedule. That's why I got Blinkist. Blinkist helps me understand powerful ideas from books and podcasts in a short amount of time. They've condensed over 5,000 titles in 27 different categories into 15-minute bite-sized chunks. Thanks to Blinkist, I've been exposed to many more powerful ideas than I otherwise would have been, and now I get the chance to enjoy books that I otherwise wouldn't have ever taken the time to read. So far, my favorite shortcast has been Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind by Noah Harari. It really puts our existence into perspective and changes the way I think about life. They offer numerous titles from the New York Times bestsellers list, so you can quickly get caught up with all the most interesting new ideas circulating in our culture. Download the Blinkist app and click the link in the description to start your 7-day free trial, and also get 25% off a premium membership. Thanks again to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. Now back to the flight! For the first day, I did not have a flight controller on board. It was just a normal RC receiver going straight to the servos, so no stabilization or anything like that. First thing I noticed was that it needed a lot of airspeed before even getting close to taking off. These wings are not really all that big and the RC car's chassis is pretty heavy, so it's really not an optimal flying machine. The wing angle of incidence relative to the fuselage and the tail is 5 degrees, and in hindsight I probably should have given it a little bit more. After doing a few hops it became clear that it did not have much of a natural tendency to stay low to the ground. With enough airspeed to take off, it would just keep climbing. At one point I even just let it fly like an airplane. It certainly didn't fly well, but it did fly, at least for a little while. Ugh. The next day, I installed a Pix Racer running Sebastian's custom ArduPilot code with the Rangefinder Altitude Hold feature. Here you can see the little LiDAR chip that I was using to measure the distance from the ground. It took a little time to get the parameters tuned right, but eventually I got it to the point where it would just kind of barely skim the ground, and at least not fly up like it was doing before. I never really got the chance to fly very far because it was so fast that I could only keep it within line of sight for so long. If I could go back in time, I would definitely design this thing to utilize the ram air effect more, where it would behave a little bit more like a hovercraft. I think that would slow it down quite a bit and make it easier to stay in the ground effect. So yeah, even though this technically worked, I would not consider this project to be a big win, other than maybe fabricating some nice wings. <laughs> Why didn't I put rudders on it? <laughs> oh no. Oh, the whole thing just got skewed. The wheels were in a turning position. You can tell I was trying to turn right before the battery got unplugged. I think maybe I'll build an airplane out of the wings and tail and take the RC car parts and try to make a high-speed EDF-powered non-flying car. We'll see. Anyways, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.